Waldo Emerson quote. Hmm. I just got it from Andrew's book. Good to and know. she can make copies for you at a considerable price. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, at least, you know, one beer each. That's cool. He's, that's that's cool. Can you read it? Yes, I can. Out loud. <laughs> <laughs> then do it. <laughs> it is good to acknowledge that as magnificent as this cosmos is, we also experience in each of our dreams a personal and private universe that has been created just for us. I think you might have read Plato. Who's the name? Pla Pla Plato? Plato? Some obscure Greek. I don't think that was invented yet. Maybe. So did he study his dream? He, d he studied what? Plato. Did he study his dreams? I believe he did. Or he did was, he yeah. just make that observation and go on to the next yeah, yeah, point? Yeah, he went, he lived in New England, so they're a special world over there. <laughs> But somewhat north of Brooklyn, for those of you who are not familiar with geography. No. It is a special world, all right. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. A special world. Yeah. When did he live, Emerson? Uh, 2004. <laughs> all that, Emerson. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, excuse me. Oh. 1830. That's when he was Give or take a few years. Born? Yeah, just about. He lived, I think, until it was correct. He lived to 1860. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I'll figure it out for you. So she's got the book, so she knows it's true. <coughs> no. And um, Amy said she'd be interested in giving us a talk on Ralph Waldo Emerson any time, and I suggested that we find a time to do it, so time. next week or so. <laughs> All she needs is some encouragement, so if you guys encourage her. <laughs> um, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Hmm. express encouragement. Where did you? One of the things that... Don't erase it yet, please. Yeah, don't erase it. Just I'm, I'm just copying. Fast. Yeah. You're copying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there goes Amy's... Commission. <laughs> Where did he live? Oh, he was in the northeast. Oh, yes. Born in 1804. Just in Boston. Oh, Boston, okay. So, did, um, you know, started the group, the Transcendentalists, um, oh. who basically revived um, yeah. the idea of Providence. Mm -hmm. Boston is primarily known for bookstores. Yeah, I got that from Rod Waldank, and he's an <laughs> expert on the field of geography. Not anymore, though. Lorenz got too high in the knee. Now, wait a minute. Is it fair? Wait a minute. Let me, let me raise a question. Is it fair for Barbara to do all this work copying this out without telling us why she's doing it? No, I don't. No. Yes. It is. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fair. Therefore? Therefore, you have to ask. <laughs> well, I think it would also be fair. Why then did, did, did Pierre put up this quote? Would it not be equally fair yeah. if he should explain his motivation um, in putting it up as mine and copying it? I agree with you. I agree. But ladies before gentlemen. Absolutely. No, I think we should have the source uh, before Let me check if that's true. Oh, well, ladies before gentlemen. <laughs> no! <laughs> Guys, don't know how to reason. One of the tests is whether or not you agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to do that with my wife for years. It doesn't work. I used to think she was intelligent until I found out she differed from what I thought. <laughs> yeah. That comes as a surprise, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. A rude awakening, yes. <laughs> did she agree with you or did she disagree with you? No, do you, do you, uh, you agree with you? <laughs> we could... Uh, this is Ralph Waldo. This looks rather like um, Dravidovich McGee by way of um, 
Vinsky. Vinsky. Or Vinsky. 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 What we can have. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this will highlight the problem of the one and the many. And uh, if those of you who would like to get into the question of the one and the many, Rod said uh, he's really into the problem of same and other, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it, so. I have an announcement. Um, Ignatius on Doubts and Solutions of First Principles will be published in English on May the 10th by Sarah Rabb, who did work on Neoplasianism. So, Oxford University Press. There it is. Say, yeah. I'm sorry, the title again, Rob? Doubts and Solutions on First Principles. Oh, that's right. What is it again? Doubts and Solutions on First Principles. Mm -hmm. Not second. May the 10th, yeah. No, first. First principles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got a complete translation of the whole thing. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm sorry, the, the name of the... R-A-P-P-E is her last name. What's her first name? Sarah. Sarah. Is that name coming? No. S-A-R-A, -A, and it's going to be Oxford Party. Okay, and I think you said it's Timasius? Timasius. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Timasius. First person. Which I'm from. Now I got it. Now I got it. Uh, there was a bit of English translation that started a long time ago. It's okay, Barbara, check it out. Thank you, sir. Shrine of Wisdom. Well, I might have had a dream of that very nature here. I had a dream of that very, that, that was very much like that. If not the very thing. A Therefore, who, you must have been the author of it. Well, I don't think that necessarily Does it fits? No. Hmm. So, let us play, okay? Get back into that wonderful work. And we need a uh, I think we're at that wonderful section 40. Forty-two, I believe it was. Um, yes, forty-one B. <clears throat> Gods of God. It's a lovely quote, isn't it? The way it starts. Gods of gods, whose works, whereof I am framer and father, and are indissoluble. Saved by my will. Right. All, everyone with us? Yes, yeah. What's the number? 41B. Yes, 41B. And uh, those of you who have different translations or using any other aid, why? We'll play. Okay? Yes. All right. Julie's going to read. Loud and clear. Why don't you come up here? Okay, just waiting for her to get the page 89. Sure, sure, sure. Page 89 and below. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Michelle, <clears throat> we'll use that principle. But raise your hand if you want to show your stock for any reason. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> okay. Okay, I'm just going to do the introduction. Now, when all the gods, both those who resolve manifesti manifestly and those who manifest themselves so far as they choose, had come to birth, he that generated this all addressed them thus. 
gods of gods, those works whereof I am framer and father, are indissoluble, save by my will. For though all that is bound may be dissolved, yet to will to dissolve that which is fairly joined together, and in good case, were the deed of a wicked one. Wherefore ye also, seeing that ye were generated, are not wholly immortal or indissoluble, yet in no wise shall ye be dissolved, nor incur the doom of death, seeing that in my will ye possess a bond greater and more sovereign than the bonds wherewith at your birth ye were bound together. Now, therefore, what I manifest and declare unto you do ye learn. Three mortal kinds still remain ungenerated. But if these come not into being, the heaven will be imperfect. For it will not contain within itself the whole sum of the kinds of living creatures. Yet contain them it must, if it is to be fully perfect. But if by my doing these creatures came into existence and partook of life, they would be made equal unto gods. In order, therefore, that they may be mortal, and that this world all may be truly all, do ye turn yourselves, as nature do, directs, to the work of fashioning these living creatures, imitating the power showed by me in my generating of you. Now, so much of them as it is proper to designate immortal, the part we call divine, which rules supreme in those who are fain to follow justice always, and yourselves, that part I will deliver unto you when I have sown it and given it origin. For the rest, do ye weave together the mortal with the immortal, and thereby fashion and generate living creatures, and give them food that they may grow, and when they waste away, receive them to yourselves again. Thus he spake, and once more into the former bowl, wherein he had blended and mixed the soul of the universe, he poured the residue of the previous material, mixing it in somewhat the same manner, yet no longer with a uniform and invariable purity, but second and third in degree of purity. And when he had compounded the whole, he divided it into souls equal in number to the stars. And each several soul he assigned to one star, and setting them each as it were in a chariot, he showed them in the nature of he showed them the nature of the universe, and declared unto them the laws of destiny. Namely, how that the first birth should be one and the same ordained for all, in order that none might be slighted by him. And how it was needful that they, when sown each into his own proper organ of time, should grow into the most God-fearing of living creatures. And that, since human nature is twofold, the superior sex is that which hereafter should be designated man, and when, by virtue of necessity, they should be implanted in bodies, and their bodies are subject to influx and efflux, these results would necessarily follow. Firstly, sensation that is innate and common to all, proceeding from violent affections. Secondly, desire mingled with pleasure and pain, and besides these, fear and anger, and all such emotions as are naturally allied thereto. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, um, just, I'd like to just uh, see how you understand this one phrase. I'm back at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. It's that long sentence, where you also mm -hmm. seeing that you were generated. Yeah. Okay, do that one over Wherefore ye also, seeing that ye were generated, are not wholly immortal or indissoluble. Yet 
In no wise shall ye be dissolved, nor incur the doom of death, seeing that in my will ye possess a bond greater and more sovereign than the bonds wherewith at your birth ye were bound together. Good. Okay, what does that mean? What kind of bond are you talking about? Well, there's two, right? The first is the ones that have bound them together. And the second, you know, is the will of God. More. That's true, that's true. Okay, there's, there's only one bond. Well, so it's... We can, I guess we could also use the word providence, possibly. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, unless it's there, I don't want to use it yet. Okay, but I'm just saying that the, the issue is is that the will of the Creator yes. is the bond, you know, that is truly indissoluble. And that's what he's saying, right? What does he say, Julie? In the text? Well... There are two ways of reading this. I just thought maybe I'd get your attention on what There's two bonds, mean. right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Appears. There's two bonds, it appears, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The bond in, in the will that's greater and more sovereign, but the bonds with that they had were bound together with at their birth. Mm -hmm. There's another right. bond. Yes. Mm -hmm. But your so question about what is that nature? They got a bond birth, yeah. at birth. Right. Right. And it's, it's hard to tell whether they were bound together or that's right. Right. Or mm -hmm. bound together. That's right. So whether they gained a, a bond of unity individually or whether they're bound together as a set, right. Right, so to speak. Mm. Right. Or individually in the set. Or individually in the set. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore would you agree with Thomas? Ready? God of gods, gods of gods, of whom I am the demiurgus and Father, wait, no, Demiurgus and Father, whatever is generated by me is indissoluble, being, such being my will in its fabrication. Indeed, everything which is bound is indissoluble, but to be willing to dissolve that which is beautifully harmonized and well composed is the property of an evil nature. Mm -hmm. Good. Hence, so far as you are generated, you are not immortal, nor in every respect indissoluble, yet you shall never be dissolved, nor become subject to the fatality of death, my will being much, my will being a much greater and more excellent bond than the vital connectives with which you were bound at the commencement of your generation. Mm. Wow. Mm. So it's the bond, therefore, this, the bond that they were connected together, is also this, Bound together? Yeah, but still. Yeah. You're not immortal in my design. Bound together as a group, as Barbara was saying, or oh, bound yeah. together individually? Right. Well, he's saying vital connectives. Now, if he means life connectives by that, then it would go towards the individual side, right? That's right. And this is Rod's riddle about one and many? That rod is always with a problem, one and many. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we can call on them so frequently. Uh, and the next is the idea, I get the next question, further down, as a consequence, he says, uh, all, <coughs> do you turn so, yeah. Eight, eight lines further down on the same page. Mm -hmm. okay. All do ye turn yourselves, as nature directs, to the work of fashioning these living creatures, imitating the power showed by me in my generating of you. Therefore, what is the role of nature in this second creation? It's um, it's an indissoluble bond. Generation. <clears throat> well, it's directed. Exactly. Yeah. 
What is it? Directing, therefore. What is it similar to? So on this level, it's a parallel, mm -hmm. similar, mm -hmm. not same, similar, mm -hmm. or same function. Mm -hmm. Now, we're uh, told mm -hmm. to imitate the power mm -hmm. showed, right, showed by me mm -hmm. in my generating a view. Mm -hmm. But that's this. But that's this. That's this. <laughs> so therefore, it's important to know how those two yeah. ideas fit together. Yes. Right. Well, mm. yeah. there's also the use of the word fairly joined up above. Does fairly mean beautifully or? Yeah, it's colors. Colors, okay. So it's a beautiful joint, bond or joining. So, nature is doing what? Generating. Directs. <coughs> and what does he want them to do? These gods are doing this? <coughs> to imitate the power. Imitate the power. Showed by me in my generating of you. Therefore, they have to imitate that bond. However, we decide which way it goes. Wholeness. Wholeness. Great principle, wholeness. Does that mean that they can see how he did it? Or they can see how themselves and others are bonded? They have to. They have to. In order to do this, they would have to then see this in order to. Well, what I'm saying is this: yes. they they would either need to see how he made them, and how could they see how he made them? Because they were being made. You can't. No, that's only time. Isn't Take time it? Time out. You don't have any problems. <laughs> time isn't in the picture. Okay. All right. We're still talking about those. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't, aren't they looking to nature to see how it, nature itself generates, how it always is and it's always being to help with turning themselves? That, that is something we want to see, to see because the question is, is that similar to what the Demiurgos did? <coughs> He's saying, imitate me. Right. right. But imitate me not in the generation of the universe, Take me in the way in which I did this. So how is that different? Well, I'm just going to ask you a question. And, uh, okay, it's a dirty trick. But I'll... <laughs> if they're going to see, if they're going to imitate the power showed by me in <coughs> my generation of you. They have to imitate that power. Ah, the bond now has a power, right? In my generating you. When I generated you, I, of course, generated you. And this bond is what connects you together and individually and collectively, if that's the way to read that. But look here. What is it they would be doing then? Okay. okay. Finish it out then. Come on. So shall we keep keep reading there?
Could you finish that for me? As the demiurgos look to the paradigm to produce the copy called the cosmos and the all, so too the, what they sometimes call the junior gods, <laughs> I'll just call them gods. Same way. take it now, perhaps it might be better to get this out for okay. It says, um, okay, that, that mortal natures therefore may subsist, and that the universe may be truly all, convert yourselves according to your nature to the fabrication of animals imitating the power which I employed in your generation. Mm -hmm. So there is like, this. They, he takes it to be, convert. you know, you, you're going to turn yourselves to it, right? Imitate it. And like an usila, right? Turn yourselves upon it. And according to your nature, rather than according to nature with a, as a higher principle. Yep, so this is a capital M. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's what the lobe does with it. Yeah. But Thomas is saying, excuse me, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But we, I, it's important, though, that here uh, it's a fashioning of the creatures, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, living. 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 So. Is to weave the uh, immortal with the mortal. See, because uh, the cosmos is a living creature. Well, cosmos, he calls it a living mm -hmm. creature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And here, this is fashioning, of course, not bringing it mm. into existence. Right. So, um, it goes to this one issue. Can you finish that? Parallel <coughs> structure. Definitely a parallel structure. So, the fact that what they do is now they're going to create, uh, they're going to take the paradigm of that and interweave the mortal with the immortal as a paradigm to fashion the living creatures. See, um, he's imitating yeah. the power. Oh, yeah. Agree? He's mm -hmm. imitating the power. Yes. Here, uh, he's looking to or contemplating the paradigm to produce it. This is the use of mind. What are you doing when you're imitating? Copy. Is it the same level or another a different level? It's a lower level. Lower level. Lower level. But are the relations similar? If so, if this is looking to the paradigm, what are these gods looking to? They're are looking they to looking the cosmos. <clears throat> Therefore, it's going to be important to know which way this goes, since there are two different statements. <coughs> See, this is saying what uh, the bond that they're birth. Mm. But then he's adding something. Is he, is he just adding plural, <coughs> or is he indicating the relationship among the gods? There are two different ways of looking at it. Um, and 
And therefore, just to complete it, As he distributes the soul throughout the heavens, through life. Right. he showed them the nature of the cosmos and declared unto them the laws of destiny. is what he's going to call at this point destiny. Agree? So, uh, is that a different idea of destiny? Come on. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lesser, lo a lesser role. <coughs> You mean taking providence as the higher and destiny here as the lower? Also, like, uh, uh, where we're going, of course, uh, is another idea of destiny, but you can also take the idea of destiny from the Republic. Uh, daughters of necessity, mm. right? Mm -hmm. They are, in fact, vehicles of destiny. So therefore it's a different kind, isn't it? The first class is in destiny and male and female, I think. But what's interesting, however, in this, is that they too them the nature of the universe. Well, that's just what he's been creating. Mm -hmm. Show them the nature of the universe. Oh. So he's creating take this and then they're distributed to each soul has a particular star right? and each of them are shown the nature of the cosmos mm -hmm. which is really everything up to this point mm -hmm. so wait a minute, what does that mean? that means every soul has had a total view of the very nature of creation that came mm -hmm. before it Yes or no? Oh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so there's really nothing you have to learn. And that's why he's got the doctrine of recollection. Right? Remembrance. All you have to do is remember it. Oh, right. Okay. So for metaphysics, it's already there in everyone. It's already there. Everyone has experienced this model up to this very point. Um, now, there's a shift here in the whole text moves from this point. Show them the nature of the cosmos and declared unto them the laws of destiny, namely, how that the first birth should be one and the same ordained for all, 
in order that none might be slighted by him. And how it was needful that day when sown each into his own proper organ of time. See, there's a shift. Now we have to move from, what is this in sown? Look at that, see? Then each soul, that when sown, each into his own proper organ of time, right? to uh, most God-fearing and living creatures. Let's see if I... <clears throat> So each one has been, each soul then, come on. each soul, it's sown, right, like a seed. Right. Its own proper, proper organ of time. And equally well, that's in the Republic. Each person has a, chooses a lot and then that's good for has its own time, Every, everyone's game, everyone's psyche, everybody's, uh, what he calls lot, has its own time to play itself out. Now, what's interesting that I find at this point on, He goes further with that song. And when, by virtue of necessity, right. nature and necessity, major idea, they should be implanted in bodies, and these bodies are subject. Right. So, see, they're implanted now in. Bodies. And now comes a whole new phase, starting at this point, his understanding of the human body and its role it plays, and especially how it has to be in a certain condition for uh, providence to exhibit itself, but since it's a cooperative venture right, coming together. Therefore, he has to now, from this point on, talk about the condition of the body, or condition of body, right? the need for bringing now, just as the universe is seen as a point of disorder. Remember in the beginning, the whole place, it's not a creation out of nothing, right? There's already a disorder. So he starts here with the body. The condition of the body is disorder. And so the whole creation theme is now going to be played all over in terms of the body. <coughs> we can't write in this one section. Now, So we have to see how flux, see, flux, disorder, order, now how it becomes established in order for a mind to develop or to emerge.
first thing he's going to talk about in terms of the body, obviously, is sensation. And I have one more thing just to have fun with. So why don't we just pick it up right from that point and get our reader to proceed just so we can go into two paragraphs or one more paragraph. Okay. Firstly, sensation that is innate and common to all proceeding from violent affections. Secondly, desire mingled with pleasure and pain. And besides these, fear and anger and all such emotions as are naturally allied thereto, and all such as are of a different and opposite character. And if they shall master <coughs> these, they will live justly, but if they are mastered, unjustly. And he that has lived his appointed time well shall return again to his abode in his native star and shall gain a life that is blessed and congenial. But whoso has failed therein shall be changed into woman's nature at the second birth. And if in that shape he still refraineth not from wickedness, he shall be changed every time according to the nature of the, his wickedness into some bestial form after the similitude of his own nature. Nor in his changing sh shall he cease from woes until he yields himself to the revolution of the same and similar that is within him. That's key, mm -hmm. right? Wherever we find it, we watch it, same and similar throughout the time it is, right? And dominating by force of reason that burdensome mass which afterwards adhered to him of fire and water and earth and air, a mass tumultuous and irrational, returns again to the semblance of his first and best state. Okay. Uh, you're going to hold on to that great principle of the revolution of the same and the similar hmm. that is within him as well as in the universe, right? In other words, are the themes similar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now watch it. Here we go. Keep reading. Please. When he had fully declared unto them all these ordinances to the end that he might be blameless in respect of the future wickedness of any one of them, he proceeded to sow them, some in the earth, some in the moon, others in the rest of the organs of time. Following upon his, this sowing, he delivered over to the young gods the task of molding mortal bodies and of framing and controlling all the rest of the human soul, which it was still necessary to add, together with all that belonged thereto, and of governing this mortal creature in the fairest and best way possible to the utmost of their power, except insofar as it might itself become the cause of its own evils. Okay, that's it. He proceeded to sow them, some in the earth and some in the moon, others in the rest of the organs of time. Huh? So, so, so. See, all of this is so. Now, I wonder whether you recall that curious section. Um, I think we did spend a day or two on it.
Just for a while. So, um, I, I, uh, not too good with language, but um, what is the realm called between uh, the moon and the earth? Sublunar. What? Sublunar. Oh, sublunar. Oh. Oh, is that, is that the same set of gods that function in the sublunary world? On 41? Let's take a look. Is that what we did with the sublunary gods? Is this their realm? Come on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, this terrestrial realm, this is the sublunary realm. <clears throat> and now we're going into the next phase of molding. Agree? Now comes the next stage, molding. For what purpose? He delivers over to the young gods, the task of molding mortal bodies and of framing and controlling all the rest of the human soul, which it was still necessary to add together with all that belonged hereto, and of governing this mortal creature in the fairest and the best way possible to the utmost of their power. So what are we doing now? We're going to go into a new phase. Molding mortal bodies and of framing and controlling all the rest of the human soul. Right? For governing the mortal creatures in the fairest and the best possible way. So what's he going to do? He's going to mold bodies and frame and control all of the rest. Right. What's he going to do? Mold bodies. Another level? Right. Framing and controlling the rest of the human soul. Could I look at this just for me? Absolutely. Yeah. Um. see in terms of the sublunary gods from this point on? Because this is where we're going. Take a look at Porky's. What do you see, porkies in our sheets? Mm -hmm. 
physical productive principles. Here the uh, essence of the cause of generation finds expression as the principle of all pregnancy and prolific life. Perfect, right? The perfection now reaches the progression of prolific life, is, right, et cetera. Right, right. Um, species general and differentiation. Yeah. <coughs> He's now going into nature, isn't he? Here is the whole realm of perfection, is it not? As we talked about those three phases, sensation, desire, and emotion. It's chaotic, but if you master it, you match with that star, which is matched to your soul, the soul in the star, and so you live a blessed life. Huh. Certain kind of mastership is required, but in any case. Um, So, going back, all right, uh, do you think we can settle on this? Number one, the bond. <clears throat> Two, the problem of nature. starts with a vision of the cosmos. Start out with the whole vision of the cosmos. Then the role of necessity. We need to know that. You have to understand what this is, imitating the bond. We're looking at the difference between the distribution principle and sewing, two separate ways of functioning. We're wondering whether or not we can complete this analogy. Junior God's fashion as the other creates, living in two levels, living intelligible creatures and living creatures, which he calls the uh, cosmos and the earth. Well, at one point we discussed the idea of soul in the sensible world being jammed together with essence as a thing. Now, is that the bond we're talking of here? Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing? Okay. So that particular bond then is created down in the sublunary. Then we should be able to see that bond reappear. Mm -hmm. And if it's dispersed and in chaotic state, he has to find some way uniting it and bring them together into some kind of a bond. So, is it possible that all of the parts of the human body for those of you who don't know, have no experience with physiology, that's man and his organs. Yeah. <laughs> and good. my figures are nude, so don't let that upset you. Or upset you. Right, right. So, but um, must see here, is it enough for each of the gods to have a, from birth, a bond? Well, wait a minute, what about they also have a bond together? Does that mean each of the Organs that he's going to be talking about each has a unity as well as the need for <coughs> them to come together. Uh, must there be a bond here similar to the bond here? Mm. 
if so, then we need this for this. And did the opening of the dialogue start with, uh, with any of us starting on looking at the universe in disorder? Is, does he start out with a, a real disorder here? The condition of sensation, etc.? No, it's completely desultory. Ah. Ah. If so, then uh, similar right? functions remain similar as the terms vary. Hmm. Jump in. Could you make the analogy that human beings of necessity have to have all of the organs that are similar <coughs> to, to the gods? Oh. See, all we need to do is just make one assumption, and that is, is it possible that these gods are the sublunary gods? And is there any relationship between sublunary gods and whatever is vital in then and now? Well, but if so, then the answer would be right on. Because that would be the chain of being. And this would be the chain in the human body of perfect health in order to be in the condition for providence to take place. Right, okay. Oh, okay. It has to be consistent. I hope so. Yeah, so it should be kind of an integral movement to the whole mm -hmm. thing. leading from if those gods were the sublunary gods and then a couple other consequences would follow. Would you mind running that down? I didn't, I didn't get it. Um, it's the same issue we had a moment ago on uh, can we assume something about we just did it with the sublunary gods, didn't we? Right. Then the question can come up, who are these junior gods? How are they functioning? Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like they're functioning between. Okay, okay, okay. Then Lyndon said, excuse me, he said, is it possible that each of the gods, let us assume there's some luminary, have some relationship equally well to the principal organs of the body? If mm -hmm. so, there's another parallel mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, Dr. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Um, Now, um, we are at a good place. Um, so he then, having given all these commands, was abiding in his own <coughs> proper and wanted state. And as he thus abode, his children gave heed to their father's command and obeyed it. They took the immortal principle of the mortal living creature and imitating their own maker, they borrowed from the cosmos portions, fire, <coughs> water, and air as if meaning to pay them back on the portions so taken, they cemented together. But it was not without those indissoluble bonds wherewith they themselves were joined that they fastened together the portions, but with numerous pegs invisible in smallness for smallness. And thus they constructed out of them all each several body and within bodies subject to inflow and outflow, they bound the revolutions of the immortal soul. Um, okay, I just want to go back to that one phrase.
but it was not with uh, those indissoluble bonds wherewith they themselves were joined. Now that could be singular, couldn't it? Could be plural. But in any case, Bonds, he's now taking that and dropping it down another level, isn't it? Right? Parallel, dropping a level. Pure? Which did you say could be pure, a plural or singular? Bonds? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> wherewith they themselves were joined. Let's see. Let's see. Let me do it again. And the portion so taken that they cemented together. What are they doing? Together. Uh, not each one, but together. But it was not with those indissoluble bonds wherewith they themselves were joined that they fastened together the portions, but with numerous pegs. See, let me add a word. Mm -hmm. But it was not with those indissoluble bonds wherewith they themselves were joined together mm -hmm. that they fashioned together the portions. See what happens when I put the mm -hmm. word together in? Mm -hmm. It picks up together before cementing those together. Mm -hmm. right. If you can make that, that looks like this, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Therefore, that gives some confidence in terms of the way he's building it, that certain basic structural similarity. of course, with the uh, revolution of the sand. So why don't we take a break here at this point, okay? And pick it up from 43A, right at the beginning of that paragraph. Or Okay. And anyone want to make comments, please just jump in. Uh, I don't think we solved this. this, this, this no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. this one. Uh, 
as the demiurgos look to the paradigm and uh, created the cosmos as a copy See, you have to you have to use his language and the all. So to the doctor <coughs> position must look to idea of perfect health for medicine right, to create the health of the body. You're going further and saying, but the model of the physician presupposes the element of time. Measure and cause. Measure and cause. Yeah. I thought you did introduce time as well, didn't you? I was asking if time is... Because of measure and cause, I was wondering how it works in, in, the, in the paradigm in the paradigm of the demiurgos, no. because I don't see those two no. No. elements. Um, yeah, see, um, what does the demiurgos do? Does he does he simply reproduce everything in the paradigm, or is it necessary for him to add something to it beyond what was in the paradigm? Like, uh, if we want to say that the paradigm includes those three elements, not agree if you bring in time uh, you're now in the temporal and no longer in the eternal mm -hmm. and there must be a cause for time surely uh, which is sometimes said to be eternity uh, and measure is to define each thing to be what it is that's the idea of measure. Right? Each thing is to be what it is and nothing else but itself. Right? It measures it. Uh, so, now can you conclude for us? Do you want to say, therefore, that... Now restate your question, see? point would be, to, to what degree are they similar, and where do they depart? Okay, yeah. You could say, as the demo loose the paradigm, and, and saw the need for order, and harmony, so the position must look to the idea of perfect health right? to see the need for order, uh, because you saw the need for order in the disorder. <coughs> so the position must see disorder, illness, I must be able to see the need to bring in order to the to illness, and therefore that must be the cure, right? Okay. 
In other words, there are parallels. But you were raising the issue of time to that. Do you want to leave that in there? Yeah. And that's, I guess that's the most confusing part of it. I, I want to see what... If he's saying that... See, you're going... Notice you're going this way. Right, that's probably part of the problem. Right, you're not going this way. You're right. going this way. You're saying... So in a way, you're using this as your model and looking for its parallel here. Right? Normally, right. we would go from here and say this is an imitation of this, mm -hmm. and therefore this would be the lesser and there'd be things in it which can't be in here. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Would you not agree it's absolutely essential for the the physician to have a grasp of time. Right. He has to know how long a person is ill, how, how much treatment is required, over what length of time, how long to take medicine, when to, to stop it, when to add to it. Time is running through everything here, and the physicians are. Mm -hmm. right. Because it's totally subject to change, isn't it? Well, are the things that the demiurge looks to, to to produce the this thing that he's generating? At what point would you say he's talking about the eternal, and what area is he talking about becoming or being and becoming? So you have to you have to tell us what you see. That's why I started out by saying, what would be the implications if you found time in the paradigm? I imagine you'd say that things would have to change. Right. And all the ideas in the paradigm would be subject to change if time plays a role throughout the entire paradigm. Right, but they don't. No, 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 no. Okay. Time for a cup? Cup of yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you.